today we're going to start the speed handle. You need to draw this information using 2D lines and arcs and create a solid of it based off all the dimensions. As you can see, the dimensions are clearly stated in here from the degrees to the radiuses to the diameters to the horizontal dimensions even some fillets and radiuses in here. The text isn't defined, we'll talk about that later. You got a depth of a hole and the thickness of the finished part. Please take your time in drawing this and make it accurately. Today we're going to start working with the speed handle. First thing we're going to do is bring the speed handle inside the vise that we have here from Kurt. We're going to first use File, Merge, and we're going to choose our template we're going to use, and you'll see it come in in this area. Now, we'll accept the default, and we can see where it's located down here in the corner. We want to get it positioned so we can machine it and set in the vise. The vise is something that we can see as a digital uh, display of what we're going to do physically out on the machine. So first thing I want to do is turn off all other levels and as you can see all these levels are set here the only one I want to see is a speed handle which I'll highlight and turn everything off and I will accept that and that's what I want to work with first. So let's get going and machining this. Now that we have it merged with the vise we're actually going to come in here and set up our machine definition so we can start machining this. The first thing we're going to do is show our toolpath, lock it in, and choose our machine type. Our machine type that we're going to use is the Haas Generic 3-axis mill. You should have that loaded in there. If not, you go to Manage List and add that. So you'll find it on the list, select it, and add it. Again, machine type, mill, generic 3 Haas. We're going to expand the properties and we're going to go to tool settings first and you will put in your program number that you were assigned for the class. We'll assign tool sequentially, warn for duplicates, use tool pack coolant and search tool buyers when entering number if we need. That's not really important but I'll make it active. And then also we're going to override defaults, clearance height, retract height and feed planes. We'll come down here and select our material. Today we're going to be using 6061, check it, and then we're going to set up the stock setup. Now the first thing we're going to do is set our Y. The material that we're going to be using is 1.75. The X will be a rough cut at 6 inches, and the Z will be at 0.75 material. Our origin will be in quadrant 4. At the lower part of the, we're going to machine Z0 at the bottom. From now on, for the rest of the class, we will be machining at this Z. Display it, fit it to screen, and we will choose OK. As you can see, here's my part right now. It's nowhere where it should be in the material. Let me minimize this a little bit. As you can see, I can look around it. So I need to move my part X, Y, and Z. It was probably, yours was probably drawn either positive or negative, doesn't matter. We're going to move it to where we want it. So what we're going to set up is first of all, let's move it in the X and Y. Okay, so I'm going to select my part. I can put a window around it, escape, I can control A. Okay, so there's many different ways of doing this and you can use all other aspects of choosing through quick mask. You can choose the quick mask information. Uh, through colors or whatever you want to do. But here we go. We're just going to highlight it with a window. We're going to translate it. And first of all, I'm going to translate it on the Y. Now, I know the Y value of this, and we're in the middle. We want to get back down to the middle. Well, the Y value was 0.175. So I'm going to divide that by 2 to move it half the distance, but I'll reverse the direction I'm going wasn't too bad. And then on the X, if I want to, I could use the arrows just to justify it to the direction I want to go. So I'm going to go the, since I'm going the opposite, and there it is, 0.5 of an inch. Okay, so I put a, a value in here, 
by dividing by 2 and I use the arrows and I will check that now when I look at it it looks like everywhere uh, there's a part that's covered by the rough materials I like to call this my Michelangelo Michelangelo did the sculpture of David he saw a block of marble but inside how he floated David he was able to create it and that's what we are today we are creating parts out of billet or solid material and we have to position that in 3d space so no matter how we cut we're always getting a fresh edge so now I'm gonna look at from the front view of this so let's continue on front view and as you can see I'm too low well from this area I want to bring it up so I'm gonna highlight it okay and I'm gonna translate it and watch this I'm gonna move the Z doesn't look like it's moving, huh? It is. Since we changed our work plane, the Z is pulling away from us or toward us. As you can see, it's coming toward us. So we don't want to move the Z in this. Put that back down to zero. We want to move the Y. We're actually working in 2D, and I can set that up. Now, the height is very important. That's going to take a little bit of a problem for me because I can't use this arrow. I don't want it dead center in the middle. In fact, I only want a distance from here to here about ten thousandths of an inch. How do I do that? Well, let's get it back down to zero and use a little bit of math in this. Okay, these windows in MasterCam are mathematical. So what I want to do is I know exactly how far I want to go up. I know the thickness of this part is three quarters of an inch. I mean, excuse me, five eighths, and I know that this is what three quarters. So if I know that, I can do. A a parentheses 0.75 minus 0.625 which is the decimal value for 5 eighths close parentheses and once I have that it will give me a value of an eighth of an inch that's the difference between the two well I want to be one less than that right so and you think about it if I'm gonna move it up the, the rule formula would be a little bit easier it's 0.75 minus 0.25 ten thousandths of an inch so that's the number did I do a minus excuse me 0 0.01 and if I go up you can see it's 0 0.74 that I moved it and the distance is ten thou below the surface that'll give me a nice little face cut when I use it now if I look at this part it's in the X Y and Z floating in my part which gives me a little distance down here to hold on the vise and I can what I can come over here and clear screen colors and I'm set I'm very happy with the setup I will hit save and this information file save and I'll call this speed handle Kirk vice with Kirk vice um, two underscore two So I don't mess up my originals so now if I come back to levels and I turn on all levels I can see that my part is floating at the origin the parts in the air everything's looking good kind of neat if I want to come back over here and see it more of a solid I can turn it on as a solid instead of a wireframe and then we can see the part a little bit in a solid area so kind of like the Michelangelo information we're gonna carve that out out of there we got two operations to move it over it's sitting in my origin my custom cut uh, vice that I made here and that looks really good so if I want to also I can come here and highlight this and try to move it to made up to that information there if I want it to be there to make it realistic as you can see this has a stop on both sides and that's kind of cool we'll be in another series of doing that for you so right now if I wanted to move that over I'll make a construction line let's do a rectangle create a rectangle lock these distances in it's six inches this way on the horizontal tab 1.75 on that one and I'm going to lock the acre here and I'm going to put that at the origin. Select on my snap to, and that will be perfect. I'm happy with that. I will close down this information. And now, if I wanted to move this piece of the vise, I have 
an object I can move it to. So we're going to move this between points, translate. You don't have to do this. It's like, again, it's just showing you the digital information that we're using for physical. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go at the intersection where this line here and this line here to this endpoint here. And I'll apply that. And as you can see now, my part lines up with the stop on both sides. And it's kind of interesting how that works. I don't need this line anymore. It was just for construction. But you can see my part is locked in there. When I machine the jaws, I built in my own stop. So as I continue to run and run, I can just drop it in there. Okay, how's that look? Most master cams will not have this information. I created these X, Y, and Z out of solids so I can show it better to my for to you guys as students. So you won't see these images here. That's a solid image that I created. Okay. Okay, let's add some toolpaths to this. Now I'm gonna make it a little easier on myself. I really don't need the vice right now as I'm doing the toolpaths. It gives me less information on the screen. And by doing that, I can just choose level in my status area here and turn all off and leave just the speed handle design open. I'll make it fit to screen, Alt F1. And we can take a look at this and this is what we're gonna machine. Also, I don't like the solid look of the material at this time so I'll put back on wireframe so I can emphasize my design better and now I can see a lot more information on the screen and I can still see my material do I need the material right now not at this time either I can turn it off but I'm gonna leave it there just so we can see what we're working with first toolpath I want to come up with is face so we're gonna learn face for the first time face will go across our tool and machine it all the way across and give us that depth that we're looking for and that will be can anybody say that ten thousandths of an inch off the top but the z value will know that it is 0.75 okay so i'm going to choose this and what's neat about mass cam it'll give you your name that you name the file i'm just going to leave it as a default it's a big file and then right here if you select ok use define stock or i can chain well i don't have any chain that defines it other than the stock so i'm just going to choose the OK button and let it go off the stock. The toolpath that we're going to use, the toolpath type, is facing. The tool that we're going to choose is going to be selected in the select library tool. And what we're going to be using is a filter. We're actually going to filter out all the tools and just look for face tools. We'll take all the end mills right now and turn them off and choose face mill. Again, the filter turn everything else but just choose face mill and we're going to look for a three inch face mill that's the one we have in class and as you can see the number is 324 but we told it to as we choose the tools to make them sequentially and in the class it's a lot easier that we go one two three four as we choose them because we can set up the machine as a class that way so i'm going to choose okay and it comes in here now Later on, we'll define more of these. Right now, it's just getting through the toolpath. So I want you to follow the basic steps of what we've been doing. And we're going to start at uh, 3,500 and a 2,000 chip load. Okay. We'll continue to do that through the semester. The plunge rate, I want you to set it down to 6 inches. Check your values. These are perfect setups for what we're going to do. They work great. And then the next step, we're going to go to cut parameters. And in the cut parameters, we're going to choose style cut. We're going to do one pass. The tool is large enough to do that. Okay. And we will modify these values here too as well. We don't need to come in at three and a half inches. We can come at 65% of the bit, which is about two inches, and it'll apply itself on there. And same on this page. We will come down here and put this to zero because we don't want to leave 50,000 because we're only removing 10,000. So stock to leave on floor change it to zero depth of cuts we don't have any depth of cuts needed we'll turn those off linking parameters is probably the most important now this one is going to take us to a different level uh, I've taught you to machine off the top of parts because many companies do that in the local area but I'm going to teach you how to machine from the bottom of the parts which I feel is more efficient in what they're doing but if you follow a couple basic rules that I, I go through I think you'll be okay we know the thickness of the material is 0.75 so the top of stock it defaults itself based off the information and it's 0.75 
the fee plane i always like to turn that down and i keep it at incremental and i'm going to put that at uh, let's say uh, 50 thou the retract i like to teach students who are beginning to understand absolute retract will actually in incremental will take this value and this value and add it together but it's not a safe distance because if you're down into the part it's still going to retract so if we always force the retract out at least a quarter inch greater than the thickness of the part we're fine now if we take a look at this and i run this and leave this alone it's saying the absolute depth is zero and the increment depth is zero in other words the bottom of the part is zero we will clean out all the material break the tool and have a great time with it so what i want you to see is visualize what absolute was so we're going to program with absolute for this part so we can learn it eventually we'll learn incremental and you'll see the difference between the two but this part we're going to do absolute for depth absolute for stock feed plane incremental and retract absolute follow those basic rules and you can follow your tool now the depth i have to set so i'm going to touch the depth here and the depth should be the top of the part and we know that the top of the part should be 0.74 so i'm going to click depth i'm going to move in here and try to choose something on that top and what size does it say 0.74 so absolute depth 0.74 our z should read 0.74 and then the last we want to turn on our coolant and turn that on once we're done with doing all that we can check we got a three inch face mount the diameter is three inches no quarter radiuses feed rate that we're going to cut it at is 20 inches per minute at 3500 rpms coolant is on and all this other stuff is just information that has been put in from where we're drawing it so check and as you can see we'll move this back and we can see that we have the face done and now i'm going to back plot that I'm going to look at my little dialog box here. It has my rapid moves on. I can turn those off. It has my tool on. I can turn it off. And I can turn off the actual cutting part. I actually want to keep the cutting part and the rapid retracts. And now I can come in here and step this through. It's going to come in. And you can see it's coming off the part down here at the bottom. And we're at point 0.1 now. We're at the retract distance. We're going to hit it one more time. Now we're at uh, uh, the, 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 the feed plane distance and now we're at the cutting area and as it goes across it'll run across final the part at 0.74 we're actually reading the geometry pretty uh, the the Z pretty good where the tool should be so as we're done we had a good part and if we want to see it also in verification we can verify this I'll turn down the speed a little bit. I'll turn up the precision up and we'll play it. It'll come down and remove that 10 thousandths of an inch off the part. And there you go. And we'll close that down and we'll call that a successful tool path. Now the next tool path we need to do is looking at it we probably can get into the drilling that's what we need to start with before we start pocketing out that information in the middle and work our way out uh, as you can see the toolpath is still here we can actually turn that toolpath off over here in the toolpath area turn it on off on off so i want it off so i'm going to do a new toolpath and looks like i'm going to be doing some drilling here the next toolpath we're going to do is called drill and in here it'll come up and it's going to ask for since we're working with 100% solids, we're going to use select the drill point positions in the graphic film. So, so I'm going to zoom in on here and I'm going to choose. You can see where I'm. That's not where I want the drill. That's where I want the drill in the center. Do you see it popping up in there? You got to be careful. You grab any of these endpoints, it's going to put it there. But if you grab the arc and it's going to put it where you want it in the center, take your time. That's why I zoomed in. And I got all of them. I'll F2 on zoom. I'll F1 zoom back in here and continue on to make sure take your time you can zoom it to make it easier for you to see and where your point goes and i got them all correct they're all in there you can see them on the screen they're at the center and now i'll choose okay this one we're going to use the drill we're going to have to select a tool so tool number two will be it'll automatically default will be a center drill so I'm gonna filter out all these tools I'm gonna to say none and I'm gonna look for the center drills now looking up here you can see 
it says center drill and you can get used to these geometry let's take a look at some of these end mills since we're getting involved with this a flat end mill is obviously is a flat a sphere would be a round so if it's a half inch it'll have a radius of a quarter inch we have bull nose bull nose has a flat at the bottom and little radius on the side face mills radius mills chamfer mills slot tools taper mills dove mills lollipops drills we'll be coming to the drills reamers bore tools right hand taps left hand taps center drills spot drills counter bores counter sinks undefined where you can create your own engraving tools and a brad point drill use a lot in wood so we're going to use the center drills check and we're going to use since we're cutting with an eighth inch we need to find a number two center drill let me get these names over here and their center drills two flutes and a number two there it is we'll use a number two that'll work fine for what we're going to be doing it's called out in the book to do a number two check and the feed rate on this we're going to go 2500 and we'll do 2000 chip low and keep it simple uh cut parameters we're just going to go drill counter bore linking is where we're at right now we're at the top because it actually as you can see it's showing something because I physically touched something at the top of the deal so what we're gonna do is actually just remove 50 thou we're gonna plunge in 50 thou we'll get a starting hole that we can use on our drill so it's gonna be 0.7 absolute our retract is gonna be again an absolute a 0.1 I mean excuse me 1.0 top stocks fine and we're not gonna put on tips compensation because we're just gonna Kiss the top of it, actually make it a, a pilot hole for our drill bits. The coolant we want to turn on. And we can show the toolpath. There it is. It goes in about 50 thou from where it was. Actually, 40 thou because of the 10 thou we already removed. Now, if we take a look at this and select everything, we can actually watch it in solid form here. And actually, I'm going to come over and hit the stock button once. It makes it translucent. And now as we cut, it'll come in and show us the little pilot holes that we have. They look a bit shallow, don't they? We can actually go look at we have a little bit more. So I'm actually going to drop that down just a little bit. That doesn't look that deep. I want to get a little more edge in it. I'm not trying to get a chamfer out of the tool. So I'm going to move that down. I'm going to go back into my parameters. And I'm going to come in here. And change my linking parameters I'll change this down let's minus that point oh uh, let's go another 20 thou 68 and that's an absolute number we'll select everything check it'll ask me to regen and now we'll get a little bit of pilot hole in there that looks a little bit better we got some walls on there Fantastic. Okay. It'll help our tool not walk away. Now that we have our center drill done, I'm going to turn off toolpath again. And now we're going to use the same information to do the drilling. We're going to right button mouse click on it, drag it down. Again, as soon as I let go of it, copy after. Let's try that again. I highlight what I want, click once, drag with my right button mouse, click mouse but below it, and copy after. Now, when doing this, it's very important to take this arrow and drop it below. It'll mess you up in the future. So the same 12 points we use for the counter bore, we could use them for this one as well. And we can come in here and say, hey, since we did it one way, let's reverse the selection. And now once it finishes here, it's going to go back the other way. Again, that was a right button mouse click in the white area and reverse it. One, two, three, four, all the way to 12. 
And if we right button mouse click in it and reverse it, it'll flip around. It'll start at 12 and work its all the way down to 1. So I just reorientated my points. Now the depth isn't deep enough, so we're going to come over and select parameters. And since we're using this information, the same information, we have to come up here and choose the tool. So tool number 3 will be an eighth inch drill bit. So then we're going to filter out all tools. We're going to turn off center drills and we're going to call up drills. Now in the drills, we're going to look for what size tool? An eighth of an inch. And it's 0.125 and we find it here at number 82, which will turn it into tool number three since we selected that sequen sequentially tool path. I'm going to keep the same feed rates right now. Tooth out chip load will be fine. Uh, cut parameters. We're actually this time we're going to use pack. And we're going to peck down about, let's go about an eighth of an inch at a time, diameter of the tool, just as a beginner. We're going to go to Lincoln Parameters. The only thing different here we need to change is the depth. And the depth will be at the very bottom of the hole, so I'll select that button. And I'll choose something down here in space, which is that. And that's how far we're going to go. This time we're going to turn on Tool Comp, so we actually take the edge of the tool past where we want to go so we don't leave a little burr there. So we want to go down, let's say, 20 thou. So the distance at this edge at 118 degrees will drop down 20 thou past our part. And then the coolant, we don't have to turn it on because we copied it and it, well, we must have forgot to put the coolant on on the center drill. So we need to go back and check that. This is what happens a lot. People forget to turn on their coolant and then they get out there and it's a dry run and it causes a lot of problems. So let's go check. Since that one wasn't turned on, most likely that one is not because we didn't copy it over. Well, we must have copied it over. It didn't stay. All right. Well, anyway, regen. The dirty. And you can see now, just by copying that, we were able to create that same toolpath. I'll make it fit the screen, pull it back a little bit, and play this face center drill, reverse direction after it finishes this one, and drills all the way through. It doesn't show pec cycles here, but that's okay. We're going to go all the way through. And that's pretty smooth. We'll close that down. And now we're done with our part up to that point. Let's get started with doing out these areas here. We're going to use a command that's called pocket, a toolpath command. And we're going to use pocket. We're actually going to use the solid selection capabilities here. We got edge, which allows us to select just an edge. We have face, which if we touch a face, let me delete this one, it will actually, excuse me, loop with edge will allow us to grab the edge. And other face, we get the whole loop going around. We'll delete that one. We, and then we have face, which if we touch, it'll choose all the edges of that whole face. So what we're going to end up using is edge with loop and we're going to zoom down here at the bottom and choose this bottom that's not the plane we want and it gives us pick reference face we want to try the other face and as you can see it picks up the star we'll choose that one we'll do the same thing for this one other face and select it now we pick the region that we want to machine out we hit check and then we're using pocket as you can see this is the information the tool that we're going to use for that is going to be a quarter inch flat end mill. And if we scroll down, we could see it right here, number 285. And we're going to choose OK. We're going to do 3500 at a 2000 chip load. And we're going to turn on rapid retract. We'll cover these again later dates. We're going to make sure that we turn off leave on walls at zero and on floor at zero. We want to make sure this is done. So under the cut parameters, turn that off. The roughing, the cutting method that we want to use is going to just be one of these. We can use zigzag, which will give us a back and forth, a constant overlap, which will start from the middle and work its way out, which I like the best. Or we can use a spiral. Any one of these will work for it, but I think the best one is a constant overlap. We will use 50% of the bit, start from the inside out, 
and that'll be great. The entry motion that we're going to use is we can use helical, which I mean ramp, which will go back and forth, a helix, which will uh, actually create the tool a lot better, or we can choose off, which will plunge on our distance of feed rate, which is about six inches a minute. I'll change that to six. Okay, so you can choose the entry motion that you would like to choose in that area, and that will work in. Okay, now the finishing method, I do want one finish pass, and I want it to do it at the final, at not make machine passes after all roughing power, but at the final finish pass, turn this one off, so we'll engage the tool the whole distance, and the spacing we want to leave on here is about 5,000. Okay, if you want to do two finish passes, call a spring pass. And what we learned doing the soft jaws that they do flex a little bit, so you can add one more spring pass. So it'll do two passes. Okay, uh, lead and lead out. If you want to leave that on, you can. If there's enough room to do it, it will try to do it. The depth of cuts on these, I want you to go 50% of the bit, which is a quarter of an eighth of an inch because it's a quarter bit. So that's easy to figure out if you had. A quarter inch bit divided by two, it would be the depth of cup will be half the radius for the smaller tools. Okay, we're not worried about a face depth cut down here because we're cutting all the way through. We do want a breakthrough, we want to add a breakthrough to this about 20 thou. Link and parameters since we touch where we want, if I hit absolute, it's going to tell me where it should go, not to zero, it should go down here to the bottom which is 115 plus the 20 thou. Top stock looks good. Absolute needs to be to one inch. Again, let's go over there, retract, absolute one inch. Top stock 0.75 and depth is 115. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make sure that my coolant's on. And it is off, turn it on. And we should have a toolpath going in there. So let's take a look at this toolpath. We'll back plot it here. And we'll run this. And it's going to do the helical cut. Helical cut. Helical cut. Now there's a lot of distance in that helical cut. If you want to shorten it up, that's fine. You can do that. It will do a finished pass, two of them. Helical cut. Helical cut. Helical cut. And we're controlling it both axial and radial depths. Perfect, two fringe passes. So if we come back in here and we want to study how to approach it a little better, you want to look at your entry motion in this area and study it. So as you touch each one of these, the graphics will explain, hey, it's saying it's going to start its helical how far? A, a hundred thousandths of an inch. If I come in here and say, I want to do 25 thousandths, now it's shortened that distance. The distance that goes across the clearance for it, that's any, any of the X and Y, we won't hit any edges. And the angle, if I want to increase that angle, I can increase it up to five. And now the tool path will be a lot less. So if I look at it from the side here, and I back plot that, regen it, make sure my tool's on, turn off my shading, you will see that the angle approaches a lot faster and there's less time. And the five degrees increased it as it goes in and cuts this. So you're, now you're learning basic information of controlling the tool. And that we have as a pocket. We'll save that information. I was just thinking, as you move your part around, make sure you're cutting in the top plane. Uh, if you ever change the view to look at the side like I'm doing, you hit Alt 2. Alt 2 in this area, it will actually be in the front plane. When you create your toolpath, you're creating it in that side. So always get back to your top plane. Make sure that you're at the top plane there. Okay. The next tool we're going to toolpath we're going to use is called circle path, circle mill. Just like the points, we come up here and use the selected point. Again, do not snap to any known point in here. There's a quadrant point. There's a midpoint, select the entity on the edge. Very important because you want that point dead center. Check. We're going to choose the same tool, which is the quarter inch tool. We're going to set our values at 3,500 and a 2,000 chip load. We're going to go to roughing parameters, make that zero. 
and zero. This is very important about the cut parameters that we leave no material because we were at a final cut. We could turn on roughing, let the defaults go. Again, you can start your Z clearance if you want to change that to 0.05. But the size of the tool, I'm not too sure it will allow helical move. We'll take a look at it, okay? It should, it might. It's hard to say. But we have a finishing. We want two finish passes at zero. We actually want to just cut it and let it let it uh, cut on there or we'll keep the tool down. So take a look at this. I went finishing here, added the finishing number down here, two of these finishings at the final depth and keep tool down. Depth of cuts, let's follow the same thing. We'll go eighth of an inch, okay? We're gonna come over here to breakthrough. We don't need a breakthrough on. We'll choose linking parameters and there's our depth automatically in there. Absolute top stock is gonna be what? Seven five. 0.75 and retract will be one inch. Check for coolant. It is on and it looks like it did do a helical. And so let's let's analyze this toolpath by back plotting it. We'll take a look at it from the side. We'll run it. It's helicaling in and cutting out the rough. Oops, cutting out the rough. Helicaling in and cutting out the rough. Helical in and cutting out the rough. Helical in and cutting out the rough. And eventually it will do two finish passes. That's why it keeps the tool down. One, two, one more. It's going around. And there were the two extra finish passes. The next tool path we're going to do is just the contour to cut it all out. So the next tool path we're going to learn here is contour. And we're going to move around to where we want to start, which we'll start, let's say, um, I'm trying to select and nothing will happen. And that's because we're machining a solid. So I'm going to go back to my solids page. I'm going to use edge and loop. I'm going to select where I want to start from. That's what I want. It picked up the whole bottom, what I want to get to. And I'm going to hit check. Now, if you notice, the rule of thumb is outside geometry clockwise, inside geometry counterclockwise. But it now is going clockwise, tick, tick, tick around that way. So I want to reverse it, okay? I don't like where it's starting here, so I can change its start point by going forward and choosing where I want to start it. I'd rather start it right about there. As it comes in, it'll cut around and leave it at that area. This is kind of like an inside area it'd be hard to hit, start from. So I'm better off starting from this edge because my material will my tool will come outside my material and run around. So let's go ahead and control this tool. The first thing we want to do is choose our tool size, which we're going to use a half inch and mill. So now that we've already just set up one, two, three, four, five tools. Again, we'll go 3500, 3, 2000 chip load, and rapid retract on there. We're going to choose cut parameters. Everything looks good here. Zero out any of these. If there's any zeros in here, please zero them out. <clears throat> Depth of cut. Let's go down about a quarter of an inch this time. We're doing the outside. It'll be a little faster. Lead and lead out. I like to drop mine down to about 50%. Oops. 50% here and 10% on the arc. That should give me enough room to start outside and copy that over by hitting this button. A breakthrough. We want to break through about 10 thou. Multi-passes, we do want multi-passes. We want to add one finish pass. And we'll do that at five thousandths of an inch. <clears throat> and we'll do it at the final depth. So again, one finish pass, five thou at final depth. We're going to choose this information. We're going to go to three quarters, top of stock. Feed plane, I'm going to go 0 0.05 and absolute retract one inch and I'll hit my depth and you can see it puts the absolute in again I'm trying to train you to read that coolant turn it on hit check and you can see let's take a look at this and see how it cuts we're going to use the verification now we want to make sure we remove the material as it cuts in you can see where it's plunging in it's cutting at the midpoint I might want to turn that off it's leaving a couple little nibbles out there at the tip there. And I don't like where that starts from. So I'm going to go back into my parameters. Select my parameters. Look at my lead in, lead out. 
and turn off my midpoint entry. Now I'm not going to cut at the midpoint. I'm going to cut out where the line in the arc is tangent to start it. Regen that. And we notice that there was a couple little bit of extra material there. This is going to be a bit of a waste of a toolpath, but that's okay. I want you to learn how to control the tools. So what we're going to turn on is multi-passes again. But this time we're going to add two passes. And they're going to be, let's just say, at an eighth of an inch. That should get rid of it. So we're going to have two passes and then a final cut. As we go in there, we'll take a look at that, regenerate the information, and see if we got rid of that little corners. And it looks like we did by adding the eighth. Okay, so we'll save that. I'll do one more verification to see where we're at. See how far we come with these different toolpaths. We're up to six toolpaths, five tools. And first tool all the way through. Looks great. Cutting in. And our part is ready to this point. Again, to turn off the toolpaths, I can select them all and hit this button once, twice, and it turns them off. All right, we're going to do the chamfer here and we're going to go to toolpath contour and here we're going to use add face to our information from edge to loop and add face now real interesting once we touch the face it's intelligent enough to make it go outside geometry clockwise inside geometry counterclockwise just by touching one face uh, we're going to use a contour and we're going to select the tool it will be a filter out all tools and choose our chamfer tools. There's also engraving tools we can use, but we're going to use a chamfer tool on this one. There's a spot drill. Spot drill will probably work too as well. Let's try a spot drill. I haven't tried that yet. So on the spot drill, let's try the 3-8 spot drill. We'll check it. And again, it's going to be 3,500 at 2,000 chip load. Uh, here's the key point for making a chamfer. Under the contour cut parameters, we're going to choose contour type, 2D chamfer. Very important. And in the 2D chamfer, we're going to make these 50 thou and 50 thou. And you'll see a nice little 50 thou cut there. Uh, it'll give it detail. Some of you might not like such a big cut. If you choose to make it smaller, you can make it 25 or 25. You choose what you want. They all look pretty good. We will turn off depth of cuts. Lead in, lead out. Again, we'll keep the defaults. I like those. Breakthroughs, we'll turn off. Multi-passes, we're turning off. And then this will stay at the top. This is where we chain from, and it will give that information. What gives it its depth of cut is the parameters that we set for 2D chamfer. We will go to coolant and make sure that's on. Let's try that again and choose OK. And it'll create the toolpath that we need to do this with. If we don't like where it's leading, leading out, we can change those directions of change. Like this one, I probably want to bring it over here and this one over here a little further. This one's not too bad. This one looks like it's tight in the corner, which I don't want to be. I actually want to move it out. So I can come over here, select my geometry. If I don't like any of them, expand this. It is a face. I can change. I guess you can't change on the face one. Oh, we'll just take the defaults then. Righty. Now let's review what we've done so far before we get into the engraving. As you can see, this part is getting pretty much done, cut out to its size. If I come in here and I go to facing, we can see that we have the facing toolpath. Always check each time you do a toolpath. The next one, we're going to do the drill. Let's do them both. And we can choose them both. It does the pack, pack, and then the drills. Looks great. The next one is going to be pocket. It's going to pocket out these two inside areas where we use to turn the vice jaw. And the next one is circle mill. It will cut out where we're going to press fit the handle.
The next one is going to be contour, which cuts the outside of the part. And the last would be the chamfer, which let's take a look at all of them. We'll look at it in the solid verification. And let's go ahead and run this. And this time I'm going to actually make the stock solid so you can see it. And it's doing the pocketing, the drilling, cutting out. And last but not least, the little chamfer design that deburs it. And it helps us seat our handle in there. Yeah, 25 thou did look pretty good. I'd say let's stick it to 25 thou. Perfect job. All we got left is our engraving which if we turn off the solid uh, shading, we can see that we need to do that. Let's turn off the tool pass. And that's what we need to do. Made in USA, Haas, and those were designed at an eighth of an inch based off the radius. So let's do the last tool path, which would be a tool path contour. We're going to go to wireframe. And this time we're going to use a polygon because we can actually come in here and create a tool path based off what we want. And it'll pick that up. That was a lot of work. And the reason I'm showing you that is because it's very important that you understand that if you have any 2D geometry, you're going to see it on there. I don't have any 2D geometry except for my line art that I'm engraving uh, the Fresno City logo and Master Cam and Haas and Made in USA. So actually, I can just say, hey, undelete all that, put a window around what I want. And it only looks for 2D geometry. The rest of it's 3D. So it's a little easier for me to do it. So, But you got to be careful that you got rid of your 2D geometry. If not, you got to use the polygon and choose each one again. So I'll undo that. I will choose polygon and show you how it's done. You put a polygon around just the information you want to toolpath. And you click in space. That one's done. You go to the next one, click it, you do the next one, click it in space, you do the next one, using polygon, make sure, and if you need to zoom it in, zoom it in, make a window around so you can be closer to what you're seeing if that's easier for you. Both ways I did it works for mine. I have everything selected. Again, I'll delete them. I'll delete them. Yes, I'm sure. Delete them all. We'll put a window around everything and click one spot and it will take off and do mine. Now on this one, the tool that we're going to use is an engraving tool this time so so far in looking at all this we've covered a flat end mill a quarter inch and a half inch we did a uh, what would you do um, a center drill a number two a drill bit eighth inch uh, we did a spot drill and now we're going to do an engraving tool so we've covered a, quite a bit with this part so we'll choose engraving and the engraving tool that we will use I have to look at the size here it will be um, eighth inch we can get away with this one right here eighth inch with ten ten thou eighth inch with a five thou there's the one we're looking at number 376 would be a good number again 3500 and we'll run this one at two thou chip load that'll be a fine little Movement, plunge rate at 6 again. And we should cut it pretty good. Okay, the cut parameters is most important. we got to turn off 2D chamfer, make it 2D. And then the cut parameters will be off. Follow me. We're not going to have depth of cut. We must, must turn off lead and lead out. Must turn off lead and lead out. The depth of cut. As you can see, we're at 73. So we're actually engraving in about 10 thou. Top stocks. So I kind of drew my geometry where I wanted them. So just remember, it's 0.73 is our depth. 
coolant must be on. Check. And I have my toolpath. So let's take a look at the final, final part for the first operation. We'll learn the second operation on the next set of videos. And we'll play this through. It's going all the way through. Pocketing, pocketing, circle mill, contour, chamfer contour, and then engraving the part. I will come over here and turn off my tool, hide the holder, and you can see that I have just finished the first operation. The next series will teach us to cut the other side. Congratulations, we got this. All we need to do now is tell the machine what tools we need. And if you right button mouse click in this area, you can call up a tool list. Again, in this area here, right button mouse click, tool list, and your tool list should be the same as mine if you follow these steps. If not, we can readjust them. And there is your information that you will need. All this is number tool one, three inch face mount. Number two is a number two center drill. Number three is a three inch, three, I'm an eighth inch drill bit, quarter inch flat end mill for number four, half inch flat end mill for number five, a three, eight, a six uh, spot drill, that's what we use, and an eighth inch engraving tool with a tip of five thousandths. That should be your information. I'll minimize this, shut it down, and there's our tool list. And for the very last part of it, it's kind of neat to see the whole thing work together. We're actually going to turn them back on our levels, turn them all on, see where the tool is in the vise. Okay. We're actually going to run the part in the vise by plotting it. And as you can see, that it's cutting just a little bit into the soft jaw. That's why we have soft jaw, so we can cut into it. And to me, that won't be such a big deal of what we're doing. But, hey, it's just a little bit in there, about 5 thou. And that's the whole idea of a soft jaw. So let's take a look at it. Again, you will run this from the top. You'll see it. Zoom in on it. And running these parts again, it's kind of interesting just to see it cut, doing all its tool paths. I'll turn off this, the shading, see it, turn back on the shading, and you get an idea exactly how it's going. Now, if this actually went a little deeper and it went too deep, you can tell. But we're just cutting our soft jaws, and we should always mark our soft jaws if we're doing as much as we can holding the material. Very good.